Who's the lady? She's another police officer? Whoa, what the fuck? It's like a scene from Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's obviously police brutality. But, uh, I mean, how do you characterize this? Well, I mean, look, I, I see this sort of thing happen um, with police all the time in America. And the... American police is very, very defensive of its own. You know, they'll say that this was completely warranted, and if they finally do come down in a cop, very, very few times, only a slight, tiny, almost insignificant percentage of police that are guilty end up actually going to jail. I mean, I've seen, you can scour the internet for American police that are guilty of raping women on duty or off duty, and they get away with probation or one year. I mean, it sends a message, especially to the community that they do it to, which is not necessarily just black or Latino stereotypically, but the poor community. Mm. They, they show them, you know, we can get away with this. And when the government protects them, it lets them know that it values uh, corrupt order mm. over organic justice. You know, when I look at stuff like this, I, like I was saying off camera, I wonder how many times it's actually happened and it hasn't been caught on film. I'm wondering, you know, what sort of excuses the people will make who are for this video. That's what I started thinking. I started thinking of what sort of excuses people who are racist but don't want to admit that they're racist will give. Like, oh, well, you know, we have to get rid of drug dealers and criminals. Okay, but when it's your son, because your son's, you know, you, you, white kids take drugs more than the black kids, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've, I've when when this. it's time for them to do that, hmm. at that point... Would you be outraged if it was your kid, if it was your little 16-year-old white son that they're doing this to? Because it looks like a guy in his late 20s, you know, a black immigrant, that they felt it was easy to get away with doing this to. Mm. What gives the rationale for either societies or individuals to dehumanize people to this point? Well, I mean, dehumanization means that you don't have to contend with the consequences of what you did to somebody. That's essentially what it's for. It's so you don't have to go home and tell yourself, I did this to another human being. You know, it's the same reason that when people go to war, they find creatively derogatory names for the people that they're there to take over or kill or take possession of their land. And you'll see it in all manner of being. You know, it's not like just one way or another. I mean, even when I was in Afghanistan, I, I met a pack of mercenaries on a hill, right? And they all had that flag, Norwegian flag, on their on the shoulder right here. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, what the fuck are mercenaries from Norway doing on a hill in Afghanistan? They were there for the money. They're, they're perhaps the most honest people about all of it, because the government will tell you that they're there to destroy the Taliban and they're not going to leave till that happens. And yet, here they are this week, they're going to have meetings with the Taliban and talk to them. Mm. They're there to stop the flow of drug trade, you know? And then what happened? All of a sudden, like I remember, I had a teacher in college, uh, those two years that I went. He was a really ignorant man, like a, a philosophy teacher, as a matter of fact. And he was like, oh, well, you know, we're giving the, the Taliban money to destroy their poppy crops. I want to find this idiot now, and I want to play, I want to give him all the articles that have come out saying that, that the United States government now legally cannot, and its policy is not to destroy poppy crops, is not to destroy the heroin that kills millions of its own citizens, because that's the Taliban's, and that's its own fighters and its own warlords that are working there. You can't damage the product of the people that you're there to help. You have to protect those drug dealers. So you protect certain drug dealers in the world, but then you don't protect others. And I think it just goes to show that in our society, there are people, you, me, the cameraman, anybody else, all the people that you'll see at the show tonight, every single one of them probably breaks the law at least once a day. But they want to enforce it on certain people, you know, people that they don't think are like them, people that they think are different, and people that they use propaganda in order to make them different, in order to facilitate one human being being superior to another. So is this more classism broadly? Um, I think on a global scale, but there is a very, very strong racial component, obviously.
it's, you know, it because, has racial undertones. Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you, there's a there's a, a movie um, called Goodbye Uncle Tom. I don't know mm. if you've ever seen it. No. It's about Haitian slavery, and when they're taking the the slaves from Africa to the Caribbean, some of them refuse to eat. They won't open their mouths. They say, I'd rather die. So you saw him. He took like this little, uh, like a black steel nail, and he put it in the slave's mouth, and he banged it in with the hammer, you know? And that reminded me of this scene, pretty much. Like, you're going to eat. You're going to take whatever we have. No one can stop us. You know, that's invasive in so many other ways. Hmm. You know, if, they, if he put the crack or whatever up his ass, would they be raping him in order to find it? I it's, mean, it, It's interesting you say that. Right, they put a phallic object in his mouth, rape, basically raped his mouth in front of all these people. That's Nobody the did anything. The fact that this is done in public, it doesn't, not well, to defend them anything more than if they took him to the station and did the same thing. But right. you know, I think it's it's. Uh, I think that these cops, you know, I, I don't know what the context of it is. I don't know if he was fighting them before. Mm. I don't know what happened. I know the police are very retaliatory. Mm. So Absolutely. I don't want to give them any ideas, but if they wanted to get off, they would probably say, oh, before this video was taken, like he punched us or kicked us or mm. something like that. Even though that wouldn't justify what it is, they're trying their, their case in the court of public opinion now. They'll have a lot of angry conservative people from Norway who hate immigrants. Mm. Those people that say that Anders Breivik was wrong, but say that they like the things that he was saying. What? In fact, Anders right. Breivik is sitting there writing a book. Right. And this guy's a low-level drug right. dealer. He can so he's, he technically has a, 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 wor a, a worse view of the world than a mass mm. murderer, a serial killer, and a psychopath, you know? Mm. So I, it's just disheartening to see, but at the same time, I mean, the saddest part about what I think my re reaction is is that I'm not shocked mm. that I've seen this so many times before, mm. that I've seen them chase people down, beat the shit out of them. You know, I've been in situations where cops have pulled weapons on me. Mm. You know, when I was just getting out of a train station, they mm. were like, oh, they put a gun to the side of my head. When I was like 17 years old, they were mm. like, yo, get against the wall, gun to my head. They said, look, where's, your, where's the weapon? Start searching. I said, I ain't got no weapon, yeah. You know, they said, oh, we had a report that a guy with a green jacket had a weapon. Mm. I'm like, dude, I have a black jacket with a green stripe. Mm. You know, I'm real with a bunch of friends. I just got out of the train station coming here, so obviously I wasn't here before. Mm. Um, but again, and I think the worst part of it is that they're so unapologetic and they're just so cold as if you're just a piece of human meat. Mm. I wonder what would happen if someone treated their child like that. I've shown a good cross-section of Norwegian society this video. And of course you get reactions like you and me that find it like completely disgusting and unacceptable. But there, there is an element in Norwegian society that you could, you could class as racism or classism, for example. But there's also the aspect in Norway you have groups of people that think anyone that associates themselves with drugs whatsoever is dehumanised. It's actually that. Right. Taboo. So, so then, what is their what is their army doing? Sending troops out there, or, or helping people to do that? I mean, in terms of drugs, mm. how many legal drugs are there in this country that you know are totally bad for you mm. that the government just uses to push on people mm. when they need help? Like the government's the biggest drug deal. I would tell those people. Mm. They tell them, hey, you need this drug because you're sad. You should be happy. Take this drug. Mm. Or what's the matter? You know what I mean? You can't see so well, take this. You want to grow your hair back, take this drug. Your dick doesn't work, take this drug. Take this drug, take this drug. Those drugs are bad. You know I mean, the, the drugs that people sell on the street are bad. But those drugs are the right ones. Is that what people want to tell me? I, I think that's the other thing. I think people think that the worst thing to be called is a racist, and they don't want to be called a racist. So they'll say anything. They'll say, no, you don't understand. These people are invading our country. I heard there's a sentiment of that in Norway. People think, oh, you're an immigrant, you're from outside here, we should send them all back. And my question is, if you, want, if you don't want the influence of immigrants, you know, what's interesting is the hypocrisies that are involved in your argument. You're obviously not opposed to their immigrant women due to the large number mm -hmm. of biracial children that I've seen here. Mm -hmm. It's not like you want to throw out all the beautiful African and Middle Eastern women from this country. No, you like using them. Um, also, if you don't like those people, 
then why don't you get your companies out of their country? Because that's essentially what you're doing. Why do you think they come here in the first place? Because they heard how beautiful it is in the winters. These are tropical people. They don't want to fucking be in a frozen wasteland. They heard there was economic opportunity. Why? Because the business that came there... Now, either way, we can debate whether it's an exploitative business or not. Mm. But the bottom line is it's turning a profit there and paying people less than it would have to pay in its own country in order to get what it needs. Therefore, it is in some way, shape, or form taking advantage of the poverty level in the third world situation. It does that by default, or some de facto means people would say. That's fine, but it's still happening. And if you don't want those people in your country, then do yourself a favor, you old racist motherfucker. Get out of their country. That's just the bottom line. Mm. And I think that that's when people start to realize, oh, well, well, that just doesn't make sense. Well, you being in Norway and then being in someone else's country and stealing their natural resources doesn't make sense. You know, I, I think that it, at some point we have to ask ourselves, how far have we really come as a human race? Because that's not something that just affects, you know, black people or immigrants or African immigrants or poor people. That affects all human beings. At some point, if we can dehumanize one, then it opens the door for us being able to dehumanize all of them. Mm. Absolutely. And uh, this is um, the home of the Nobel Peace Prize. So. Right. And then, yeah. that, I mean, the home of the Nobel Peace Prize that in my mind doesn't have as much credibility as it used to because it gave someone who is considered by a lot of people in the world a war criminal, uh, Mr. Obama, a Nobel Peace Prize, a man who uses drones against civilians, women and children, a man who cries because other people lose their children, which is definitely something to shed a tear over, you know, that horrible shooting in Connecticut. But how many tears has he ever shed for those innocent women and children in Yemen or in Pakistan or in Afghanistan that have had their limbs blown off or, or, or been killed in a drone strike? Not a one, hmm. you know? And I think that that, to me, speaks volumes. I think they, should, they made a mistake. I think Norway would, would make an incredible impact to the world if it rescinded the Nobel Peace Prize and said, listen, you're not a man of peace. You're not trying to create peace. You're saying that now you're going to arm the Syrian rebels as if you weren't giving them arms and money through other channels before. I mean, everything about the way that the governments these days choose to communicate is totally disingenuous. You have an NSA surveillance program that's listening to people's phone calls and emails. They admitted today that they have limited drone usage, but they do have drones that spy on American citizens in America now. I mean, at some point, we have to admit that uh, there is something that can be done by this government to express that instead of just sitting idly by and saying, all right, well, we're going to punish these two cops. Mm. This is a reflection of a worldwide epidemic. Mm. Okay, to switch to a, another topic, what's your views on independent media publishing this? rather than running to the, the large press? Well, I mean, obviously, you're going to get a little less uh, uh, initial bang for your buck. You yeah, know? But I, I intend to work in conjunction with them. But right. It'll but be I, what I mean by bang for your buck is I know how the, the major label media works. Mm. They say, or, or how major corporate media works, it's just if it bleeds, it leads. The most outstanding, most horrific they can do, how, it's exactly how they'll be. Mm. You know, if it goes to them, they'll put it in as many channels as it can. But I think that what the problem is, is that I think they have a nearsighted vision about discussing these issues. They don't relate it to anything else. Mm. It's just something that happened in the street, and we should convict those cops. There's no further ramifications. It doesn't explain anything else. It's not foreshadowing of human rights. It, they, don't, they ask the wrong questions all the time. That's exactly That's the, the reason. difference between independent media. They'll be like, oh, well, we have this racist video, and... Let's talk to someone who's black and ask them about how they feel about it. And I'm like, m my questions or your questions would obviously be very different. You know, what does this reflect about the state of humanity? You know what I mean? Hmm. How do we treat one another? They don't really like to ask those questions because it causes their watchers or listeners to actually have to think. And they don't want them to think. They want them to consume. Why? Because their show is not based on whether the news is real or not, or whether it, it helps people, or whether it ennobles mankind, which in my mind it probably should. Their program is based on how much advertising they can sell to people for their news channel. That's about it. Hmm. 
Okay. I just want to finish by saying there's a famous quote, my brother. And it says, journalism is printing what other people don't want you to print. And everything else is public relations. That holds true here. Absolutely. All right. Thank you Thank very, you. very much. Mortal Technique, ViperRecords.com, Harlem, Oslo. Thank you very, very Thank much. Felipe. That's my name. <laughs> All right.